The all new iPhone 16 range is set for release later this year, but what are they rumored to come with? And are they worth waiting for? Well, if you are interested in the iPhone 16 range, then watch this video to the end as I go through what they're likely to offer. But first, if you haven't done already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Starting with the lineup and design, it's almost certain Apple will offer four models. And although it's still too early to say exactly what these models will be, they're likely to include two entry models, the iPhone 16 and the iPhone 16 Plus, and two Pro models, the iPhone 16 Pro and the iPhone 16 Pro Max. However, Apple may release a new iPhone, the iPhone Ultra, which if this does happen, will be positioned above the Pro models, replacing the iPhone Plus and keeping the model choice to four. But as things currently stand, this hasn't been confirmed and it's possible we won't see an Ultra in time for the release of the iPhone 16. So for now, I'll focus more on the models that are likely to be released. A rumored new design for the iPhone 16 is Face ID will sit under the display, replacing the dynamic island that first appeared on the iPhone 14 Pro, leaving just the selfie camera. However, despite this rumor, it's likely this won't happen for another year or so, and therefore the dynamic island will appear on all iPhone 16 models with perhaps a little more functionality. Apple also have patents filed for the selfie camera to be under the screen, but again, similar to Face ID, don't expect to see this in time for the release of the iPhone 16. However, it is widely expected the new range of iPhones will get the action button found on the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. This customizable button allows users to open their favorite feature or shortcut. For example, the magnifier, voice memos, or even an app by holding down the button. In addition, all models will get a new capture button that will sit on the right side of the phone under the power button. This button will likely respond to different levels of pressure and touch, allowing you to zoom in and out by swiping left and right on the button. And with the camera open, focus on a subject with a light press or record with a firmer press. The size of the entry models will stay the same, but the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max will see a size increase to 6.3 inches and 6.9 inches, allowing Apple to add the new folded Tetra Prism camera with five times optical zoom to both models. An OLED display will likely feature on all iPhone 16 models, but Apple are rumored to be looking at a new micro LED display, which will give improved brightness, color, and use less power. However, in view of the fact the Apple Watch Ultra is not expected to use a micro LED display until next year, it's almost certain such display will not appear on an iPhone at least for a few years. So what are the specs of the new range of iPhone 16s? Well, for me, this is where it gets really exciting as it's almost certain all iPhone 16 models will get a new powerful A18 chip, with the Pro models getting an even more powerful A18 Pro chip. Now the reason I'm excited by this is because the entry-level iPhone 15 models currently use an older A16 Bionic chip, while the Pro models have an A17 Pro chip, making them currently one of the most powerful smartphones in the world. An A18 Pro chip will not only allow Apple to retain this position, but the entry-level iPhone 16s will skip a generation bringing them more in line with the Pro models, giving them the power to better handle AI tasks. The iPhone 16 and iPhone 16 Plus will likely get an additional two gigabytes of RAM, bringing them to eight gigabytes matching the iPhone Pro models. And on the storage side of things, the entry models will have a choice of up to 512 gigabytes of storage, with the Pro models possibly having an increased option of up to two terabytes, which is fantastic, particularly if you record in ProRes. Disappointingly though, it doesn't look like there'll be a change to the screen refresh rate. Entry models will have 60 Hz and the Pro models will again have ProMotion using a refresh rate of up to 120 Hz. Wi-Fi will likely be improved on all models with the entry models getting Wi-Fi 6E and the Pro models getting Wi-Fi 7, providing faster maximum transfer speeds, improved connectivity and lower latency. 5G for the Pro models may see an improvement where they could get a Snapdragon X75 modem and all models will have USB-C. The biggest changes to the camera or cameras will likely come to the Pro models, with an improved 48 megapixel ultra-wide lens on the back, replacing the current 12 megapixel lens. The Tetra Prism camera with its five times optical zoom currently found in the iPhone 15 Pro Max will be available on both iPhone 16 Pro models. And the main camera will remain at 48 megapixels, but with potentially a larger sensor measuring one over 1.14 inches, which is an increase of 12%, allowing it to capture more light and therefore better photos. However, presently, there are few details available of what changes there'll be to the entry models. So for now, it would be safe to assume they'll be similar to the iPhone 15. 
That said, it's likely the two cameras on the back will be arranged vertically and not diagonally to presumably record spatial video for Apple's new Vision Pro headset. If you haven't seen or heard of spatial video before, then the idea is to make you feel as though you're right there when the moment was recorded. Details of battery capacity are somewhat sparse at the moment, but the iPhone 16 standard and Pro Max may see their batteries increase by 5 to 6%. If this is true, then, well, it's hardly groundbreaking, but it is an increase. And it will probably come as no surprise that Apple are expected to include a new thermal design that will prevent overheating issues, as were reported shortly after the iPhone 15 Pro Max was released. On the software front, all four models will come with iOS 18. Now this is another particularly exciting area, as Bloomberg's Mark Gurman said it's likely to be one of the biggest iOS updates, if not the biggest in the company's history. However, specific details of what iOS 18 will do are unlikely to emerge until the Worldwide Developers Conference in June this year, but it's likely to focus around AI-powered features with improvements to Siri, making it better equipped to handle AI tasks including the possibility of a new microphone that is able to understand voice instructions more clearly. And while iOS 18 will bring many new features to all iPhone models, some AI features could remain exclusive to the iPhone 16 range. As for the release date and pricing, well, it's almost certain the iPhone 16 will appear this September. And while prices haven't yet been confirmed, don't be too surprised if Apple increases the price this year due to increased component costs. In summary then, aside from the Pro models being slightly larger and a new vertical camera layout on the back of the entry models, the iPhone 16 will look very similar to previous iPhones. They will all get the action button and a new capture button, and they will all have the new A18 chip with the Pro models getting a more powerful A18 Pro chip. Both Pro models will now have 5 times optical zoom, a new 48 megapixel ultra wide camera and the main camera will likely get a larger sensor that captures better photos. Wi-Fi 7 will come to the Pro models and there'll be a greater focus on artificial intelligence with exclusive features to the iPhone 16 range. The battery will see improvements and it will likely get faster charging. So is it worth waiting for one of the new iPhone 16 models? Well, it probably goes without saying that it's still early days to know exactly what will come with the iPhone 16, with more details and changes to come. But presently, the standout features for me are the A18 and A18 Pro chips, changes to the camera, and a greater focus on artificial intelligence. So should you wait for one? Well, this will depend on your own circumstances and what you want from a phone. If you want the latest and greatest iPhone and you don't mind it potentially costing more, nor the wait, then it's worth it. But if you need a new phone now, then the iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Pro models are excellent. And you can see my full review for the iPhone 15 Pro Max here by clicking on the link in the description below or by scanning this QR code. And that's it, the iPhone 16 and iPhone 16 Pro models that will be released later this year. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button, and maybe click on one of these videos that are coming up. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.